Number 15, you're only as important to your editor slash house as the number of digits in your advance. False. Not every book is going to be able to be the big whopping throw a lot of money at it. Not every book should be the big whopping throw a lot of money at it. It doesn't mean you won't make a whopping lot of money eventually. Um, it just means that at the time that it was acquired, that wasn't the scenario that the publisher was in. No one wants to buy books that don't sell. Um, no one wants to buy a cheap book, quote unquote, but as we were saying earlier, it really is every every day someone buys a, a little book that could that just takes off and sells and sells and sells. And we're also thinking not just about one book, hopefully, but we're thinking about your entire career. Um, and so you want a, a, a lot of books that do well is always better than one book that gets a huge advance and doesn't do well. <laughs> Number 16, print is dead. Man, we're getting depressing. I know. <laughs> print, print is dead. Print is dead. I'll just go digital. False. False. Nope. Whatever <laughs> other word you want to put in there. Um, you know, it's a really exciting time to be putting books out there for any any age level. Um, because there, there are things like digital, and there are so many new avenues to explore, but print isn't dead. Um, and, you know, I, I still don't know how close we are to people handing over, like, $600 gadgets to their children to read on. Um, and I think the most important thing, too, is that stories aren't dead, and stories right. never will be dead. And part of the business that editors and agents and, by extension, authors in, are in is figuring out how to transition and how to meet the needs of, of the current marketplace. So even if print were to someday die, we'd still be here. There is still stories. Making stories. All right, number 17. You have to be out there networking via every possible form of social media. False. You know, I think that networking is great. It, this is one of the ways that digital is really cool and exciting because you have a way to reach out to people that people didn't have. 10 years ago or even five years ago but you don't have to do everything um, you know if you don't want to blog don't blog if you want to do Twitter instead do that or vice versa um, there are so many different things you can do that you should just do the ones that you feel fit your comfort level the best and be honest with yourself. Some people are going to be better at Twitter than others. Some people are going to be better at blogging than others. Some are going to be best at doing school visits, and maybe the online stuff isn't as important for them. Um, I'm a big believer in being honest with yourself, but also stretching yourself a little. Um, you never know if you're going to be good at blogging or Twitter or something until you try it. So try it. But if it's really not working for you, don't feel locked into it just because everyone else you seems to be. Quit. You can always quit. Number 18. You're missing out on huge networking opportunities if you don't go to ALA or BEA or Comic-Con, etc. False. Those events are really not designed for you, the author, um, or really even for readers in most uh, scenarios. Especially with things like ALA or BEA, they're designed for the end buyer, which isn't you. If your publisher needs you there, you will absolutely know. They won't forget to tell you. Um, if you're going to be in town anyway, it's fine to let them know, but don't take it personally if they can't use you during that time. Um, there are so many restrictions on what is allowed to happen and what can happen in space and the particular time of year that they're allowed to talk about in the booth. So don't take it personally if they don't beg you to attend. Um, and if you can, enjoy the fact that you're there. They're trade shows. By, by nature, they're for a specific trade, the librarian trade, the book selling trade, the teacher trade. And so different books are going to be more appropriate for those audiences than others. And your publisher knows that. They know, for example, that some shows really focus on books for elementary school teachers. So to have your YA novel there, even if you're a local author, might not really help anything. Um, so, so trust your publisher. It's, it's fine to ask the question of if you should be there, but also understand that they may have reasons um, that that's not the case. Mm -hmm. It's never because they don't like you. <laughs> true. That's true. I would just stress too that like in any of these situations that we've talked about, if you ever have questions of your editor, your agent, your publisher, always ask them. You should always, always feel like you can ask a question. And even to ask why mm -hmm. when you get the answer and that will maybe help calm any anxieties you have about whether mm -hmm. or not we love you, even though we do. <laughs> Number 19. 
You will have no problem cranking out that second book. You were you wrote one already. This one will be easy. Well, it depends on the writer and the situation sometimes, but I would say mostly false. Yeah, sometimes it's true. But writing books is hard, regardless mm -hmm. of whether it's your first book, your second book, or your fifteenth book. Um, and we all know this, and I think the scariest thing for authors is feeling like they're the only one who has ever had this problem and they're huge failures, or it was a joke and now everyone has discovered that you are a fraud. You're not a fraud, you're fine. And this has happened, it's, you're probably not the only author on our list going through it. It's incredibly common, second books are particularly challenging, and it, just talk, talk to your people, talk to your agent, talk to your editor, make sure everyone is informed. It, it can be a real shift to go from your first book, which maybe took as long as you wanted to write it because you weren't under a contract and you maybe weren't even write, working with an agent yet, much less a publisher. Um, so you might have taken two years or ten years to write that book. A second book, you're under contract, and so there are deadlines and all sorts of pressures, and you're waiting to see how your first book did, and maybe you're blogging or promotional. things, promotional things. And so that's that's a very different situation, and, and there's an adjustment period that happens for everybody there. So um, do let your publisher or your agent know if you're having a little quiet meltdown about that and, and see what we can do to help, because we are here to help. Yeah, and we love you, and we believe in you, and we know that you're a good writer. But if you are having problems, let us know as soon as possible because it's a lot easier to shift things around and give you um, as much time as you need if we know sooner rather than later. Don't miss your deadline five times and then tell us you haven't started the book. And I would also say even as early as when you first sign your contract, if you have any little tiny part of you that's not totally sure, there's no shame in being a writer who takes a minute to write a book um, and you should not press, um, feel like you have to agree to a deadline that makes you uncomfortable because we'd rather set a realistic one that you can hit than set one that we know you're never going to be able to achieve. Alright, and the final question. Children's publishing is a large giving community. So true. And so great that it's true. I think um, the fact that, that an event like Write on Con exists is proof of this. Um, children's publishing is maybe the best business in the world. Not maybe. It's it totally. Is, yeah. It is. It <laughs> is. There's no uncertainty. <laughs> and it's a really, it's a really generous community. Uh, I think you'd be hard pressed to find anybody in this business who hasn't gotten a, a leg up or two legs up or a whole lot of help from other people along the way. And um, most writers don't forget that, and they turn around and keep giving to a new generation of writers. And that's one of the really amazing things about it. Um, so connections within the industry are really important and really great. Be a good person, write good books, and you will be totally okay, and we will give you a cookie. <laughs> True. Hey! <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Wave goodbye. Bye. Bye.